All right, so today we're looking at the full resistive forces, looking at the drag force. Uh, so in general, this is kind of like air resistance uh, or something similar to air resistance, uh, where you've got a force that resists motion and it is proportional to the velocity. So if we start off with this, we've got some sort of object, let's say it's in free fall, so it's got a downward force of mg. But in this case, rather than just saying it's in free fall, we're gonna include an upwards drag force, an air resistance force, something like that. And so this force upwards is gonna be equal to BV, like that. And so we've got our downward force and our upward force, they're gonna oppose each other. And as it speeds up, this is gonna get larger and larger because this is proportional to the speed, okay? And so eventually uh, these should be equal to each other. And when they're equal to one another, we get terminal velocity. And so that means that when they're equal, that would be mg is equal to b v sub t. And we get the, this idea that terminal velocity is equal to mg over b. And that's the maximum speed that you'll get. Or if you're going faster than that, you'll slow down because the upwards force will be larger than the gravitational force as this object is falling. So we'll kind of hold on to this equation here and come back to look at that at the end. But what I want us to think about now is not just what happens at the end, but what happens in the middle as it's falling. So we're gonna go ahead and look at that. We're gonna write down an equation, the sum of the forces, the net force equation that we've done so far. All right, so we know the sum of the forces is, in this case, downwards. I'm gonna say the downward direction is positive. For this derivation, that's actually a very important thing, uh, that the direction of the acceleration is positive. So here, we're gonna say the forces are gonna be mg minus bv. And this is, as always, equal to ma. So this is where we start the derivation. In fact, this is where in physics we start a lot of stuff, is at the sum of the forces being equal to ma. So now what I'm gonna do is take just a minute to rewrite the acceleration as m dv dt, because it's equal to the derivative of the velocity. And at this point, you may notice we've got a differential equation. Uh, we've got a v dv dt and a v in here. And hopefully you might get some idea that, that we're probably gonna have some sort of exponential as our solution, uh, because we've got an equation that the derivative is somehow equal to itself. Um, and we're gonna to get to that in just a bit. But first, what we're gonna do is split this, uh, split this up, bring the dt on this side, and I'll bring the m over as well. And so now we're kind of getting towards that separation of variables thing, uh, but you notice this expression has a v on it, so it actually needs to be on that side as well with the rest of this. Um, All right, so here's our expression. We're gonna take the integral of both sides of this equation, and uh, that's sort of where we're gonna get to and where we're gonna get the answer for this. All right, so we're gonna integrate from zero to t for the time so that we get just time on that side. We're gonna integrate from zero to the velocity, whatever our velocity is later on on this side. So this is sort of our bounds of our integral. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this side because the integral identity that I'm gonna use here is that the integral the integral of one over x plus a dx is equal to the natural log of x plus a. So I'm gonna write it so it looks something like this, x plus or, or minus a, so x plus some sort of constant. And so since v is the x in this case, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this so that it looks a little more like that. I'm gonna pull out a factor of uh, negative b over m from the denominator. So there we are. So I pulled this m over b, and since that's a constant, I pulled it out to the front uh, before I integrated. I like doing it this way. If you prefer to do chain rule, that's fine too. Uh, I find this easier, but if you find chain rule easier, then, then by all means do it that way. Now, what we're gonna do is, is integrate this. And since it's of this form, all we need to do is say that the integral evaluates to the natural log of V minus mg over B. Keeping in mind, it's evaluated from zero to V. Now, if we look at the other side, we've got the integral of dt from zero to t, so that's just actually equal to t. So at this time, I, th I think I'm actually gonna bring this, uh, this constant over to the other side, just because it's easier to have over there. And we're gonna go ahead and evaluate this. And remember, it's gonna be plug in the V and then plug in zero for V and subtract the two. Uh, and natural logs, when you subtract them, you actually get a ratio instead. That's one of our log pro properties. So we get here that this is equal to
this. So I plugged in v and then I plugged in zero for v on the, in the denominator. And so that would be right there. And this whole thing is equal to minus b over m t. I'm going to go ahead and erase what I've got here so we can work from a little higher up. All right, so you can see we've got the same equation copied back up to the top. Now what we're going to do is uh, use the definition of the logarithm to rewrite this uh, as an exponential. And so, or you can just, you know, take both sides, raise it to the exponent e, or e raised to that exponent. All right, here we go. We're solving for v, so we're going to take this, multiply it onto the other side. And then we're going to subtract this off to the other side or add mg over b to both sides. So we get it just in terms of v. And so here's our equation. We can do one last step, which is pull out a factor of mg over b. And here is our final equation. This is the velocity as a function of time for this object. And if you graph this, you'll see something that looks vaguely like this, which is what we're hoping to see, something that asymptotically approaches a single value. And that value is equal to mg over b, which was initially our value for the terminal velocity. And the equation we previously had for this was v to the sub t is times 1 minus e to the negative t over tau, where tau is a time constant, and in this case it's equal to uh, m over b. And that's in units of seconds. And however, if you wait that amount of time, then the speed will have gone from zero up to 63.2% uh, of its final value. So after one time constant here, we've reached one, you know, 63% of, uh, of the final value that we attend to approach. Uh, there's nothing special about this number, it's just uh, 1 minus e to the negative 1. So there we go. Hopefully this uh, approach made some sense. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, as always, see you in class.